so the, the funny thing is that people think it happened overnight but uh, i think my case has been a case of slow and steady Hello and welcome to Sisterhood with me Shelly Chopra the one show where women confess their challenges and confront their insecurities and together figure out what to do about them On the show today we're putting the spotlight on how to crack it on social media a question that has bothered each one of us many many times about building a brand on social media and then engaging our massive community to buy what we have to offer Let's take a look at some of these graphics that will tell you about the statistics of where we stand today. The current market of social media commerce is somewhere around $500 billion. By 2025, we're expecting this to grow two and a half times to $1.2 trillion. The way the world is going today, social media has become the channel of recommendation what used to be word of mouth is now about a dm a private message how you share products and services that you've used endorse them and share it with friends family and the rest of your community but just how should a brand new brand crack this process where do you begin if you didn't start 5 7 10 years ago when things were just about beginning to happen if you're joining this entire exercise late this is the show you need to watch On the spotlight today will be my special guests and voices from across social influencers. Masu Minawala is a blogger turned entrepreneur and social media star who started out literally coding her own website 11 years ago. How has she managed to become a big brand by herself is our spotlight in our conversation with her. Masum Minawala thanks so much for joining us it's wonderful to have this conversation with you given how many times offline we discuss about plans and what it's going to take and where the world is going how the trends are changing i am so delighted to have you on the show to help our viewers and many many other women understand what it takes to build a community like you have and become the star like the one you have become over these many years so where is masum minawala in her journey today First thing, thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to speak to you. Um, my entrepreneurship journey started 11 years ago when I was a young girl still studying. It started off simply as a hobby. Um, I started my blog um, at the age of 18, and now I'm 29 and have been doing this full time for the last five years. Um, and I love it. I look at myself as a creator first. Then an entrepreneur and then an investor. How did Masu Minawala become famous? So the, the funny thing is that people think it happened overnight, but uh, I think my case has been a case of slow and steady. Uh, I wouldn't say wins the race because it's still there. I, I don't believe in running a race. I believe I am my biggest competition. But the thing is, I I don't look at the fame, but I'd say. I have reached where I am today after 11 years of consistently doing what I'm doing. So honestly, it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't that easy and definitely was not that quick. You know, Masum, you and I have been talking about this for a while now that there is this impression that to become an influencer, you have to wear some excellent clothes, do some fashion spins, put it on Instagram, and there you have it. People have this strange impression that that's all it takes to become an influencer. Can you break this myth down for everyone? So, you know, when people say that all it takes is to, you know, start an Instagram account and start posting photos and become a fashion influencer and creator, They're actually not wrong because that simply is all that it takes. Uh, this is an industry that has no barriers to entry. Um, it's one where you don't require so much capital or so much investment or uh, you know so many skills to start off with, and that's the beauty of it, right? Because it's it's a form of self-expression. All you really need to become a creator today is an idea, which which is here, and a phone, which is so accessible to all of us today. Um, and it literally needs just that it needs an account it needs you to post about that that expression or that idea or perspective or opinion you have and tomorrow you could have a very large community that wants to learn from you that looks up to you takes inspiration from you or is uh, you know simply being entertained by you so it's it's been very interesting because when i started off i started off in the pre instagram era 
Uh, so I didn't start my career with Instagram. I started my career with a blog, which is a word. I mean, bloggers basically don't even exist today. They just blogs don't exist today. So I started my career. Um, I was in college. I was doing BCom, which is Bachelor of Commerce. It was my undergrad degree, and I was actually just talking about this on my Instagram last night. But it was a it was an extremely relaxed course. I I didn't have much to do. I felt very lost, very purposeless. Uh, I just knew a few things that I was passionate about, and they were art, photography, uh, making scrapbooks and collages, uh, fashion, just flipping through fashion magazines. I loved putting together outfits. You know, not so different from every other like teenage yeah. girl who's creative and artsy and inclined towards fashion. It's, it's it's not the most unique sort of combination or the most eureka moment. but i was really really confused about what i wanted to do academically extremely average there was no field definitely no professional field that i was drawn towards that made me feel like you know i never had those moments that i want to be a doctor i want to be a lawyer i never felt drawn to any of these but i never felt drawn to anything at all you know um and while i was doing my bcom in bombay at hr college i started taking up internships to really discover how i felt about these hobbies and passions of mine so for photography i took up a short photography course to see how i felt about it for my art i took up fine art in an art college in mumbai and i did a six month course and realized i hated it for fashion i first did a, did a fashion design internship um and i actually realized i hated fashion design and i was like wow so i've tried these three things and they're clearly not working out so i hit just another dead end um when i decided to do another fashion internship and this time it wasn't to do with design it was to do with branding and marketing and strategy and buying and merchandising and that internship really hit home i loved what i was doing and so you admit that you couldn't even monetize it at that point because you had so many people such a large community and despite that it was not easy to crack the monetization game There was no way to monetize it. Brands would offer you a perfume bottle in exchange for a blog post or a free T-shirt, and I was like, you know, I love fashion, but I clearly love the business side of things as well. And how is this going to be? How is this going to be a business that is that is fruitful, that is profitable, that has any sort of you know PNL at all? Uh, and I I was back to kind of figuring out what I wanted to do. So that's actually how I started. So with so much going into the business, so much going behind the business, how do you really turn this into a profitable story? I mean, clearly when people look at creators, they don't think of them as businesses. They think of them as individuals who will come and go, have a few brand associations. I know for a fact through our many conversations that you're not planning this as a flash in the pan. You have a complete sense of how you want to build this into a roaring business talk to us about how have you made that distinction and switch 3 years down the line i launched an e-commerce website and uh you know at that junction where i was like oh i have a blog i have this amazing hobby and i have this incredible you know readership that's coming every day and reading what i have to say how do i convert this into a business so what i did is I built an e-commerce website and an e-commerce brand that would simply I would promote the the products that I was selling on my blog. So it was a very seamless journey of converting my already existing readers into customers. So it it was it was an all-time low customer acquisition cost. Like if if this theory has to be sold to startups today, it's it's, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I think I was way before my time. I didn't understand scalability. and i i was terrible with my operations and logistics so even though i ran that startup for a few years i quickly moved it to um auto run a few years later and then moved out of it completely and then moved to full time compensation 5 years ago now masum you and i started at a time most people were not discussing storytelling or talking of communities and i really want to remind our viewers at this point but that communities cannot be built overnight uh promoting your pages to an extent will bring you attention but will they bring you stickiness engagement and the love of the community that remains a very big question mark at the end of the day brands like masums or she the people are at the end of the day creating an effort to try and build a community that believes in them 
because of what we stand, because of the genuineness and authenticity we bring to the platforms, uh, for the kind of deep conversations we're having day in, day out, and remind you that we are here for your fashion or for that matter when it comes to She the People, for your beliefs, for the change in mindsets and all of that. So it's important to keep that very much in mind as you go out there to build a business, build a story, build a brand. Let's get back to Masum on some of these uh, parts of the entire business puzzle. So Masum, let's um, talk straight up about the big challenges of a small business today. So I think the largest challenge that small businesses face in India is that there's too many and the possibilities of visibility with low capital are very few. So you're seeing the larger companies yeah. have very large marketing spend and they're being more flexible and more loose with how they manage and how they distribute these marketing expenses, right? Which actually makes it so much harder for the smaller companies because when you're looking at a business and you're looking at, say, if I'm talking from my end, okay, we're talking about a, um, an, an advertisement aggregator, mm -hmm. like say Facebook ads. Facebook ads doesn't distinguish between a big company and a small company. And and how can they, right? They shouldn't. It's also unfair. Um, but they will give the same conversion rate or CPC to both the businesses. Whereas both the businesses in terms of opportunity, capital investment, stand a very different two standpoints. And which is where I saw that somebody yeah. like me can play a very important role, especially in the middle in, in, in the, this actually started in the first wave of COVID. When I said, you know, I have this amazing platform. I have this incredible community who listen to everything I say, right? I clearly love talking about fashion. I love putting together looks and outfits and they, they seem to take to it. They seem to buy everything I'm talking about. And I was like, you know, how do I leverage this platform I have to help and support these thousands of these small businesses who are possibly and probably going to shut shop because they can't deal with the pandemic and the, the effect that the pandemic has on their businesses. Which actually uh, was the reason that my um, series Support Indian Designers began. Thanks Masum, always a pleasure talking to you and thanks for bearing up the truth of what it takes to be you every single day. Well, as per a report by Accenture, 62% of the total spends of that $1.2 trillion story of content commerce that I'm talking about is going to be spent by Indian Gen Z people. That is a really significant number and it tells us that all of us have a brilliant opportunity to tell strong stories about the brands that we all are creating. Uh, the stories of platforms we're creating, the stories of products and services we want to sell and share. What goes in deep is how we do that without making it look like a cut and dry piece and instead turn social commerce to what it truly belongs to, the power of its community. Thanks so much for joining me once again on Sisterhood. As always, every week there's a brand new episode, so remember to follow us on YouTube by pressing that bell icon and staying with us week after week. Do remember to share this perspective that we have on Sisterhood wide and far among your communities. Thanks so much once again.